Are you ready? Oh, yeah! Strap yourselves in for the Gaming Hub. With your host, Tyler. You can't handle the truth. Graham. The force is strong. And Steven. You cannot be serious! Let's get started. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 92 of the Gaming Hub. I'm your host, Tyler, saying thanks so much for joining us. And I'm here with our two co-hosts. Let's start with Graham. Graham, you've had an interesting day. Yes, I Um, have an interesting day. So tell us about that. Okay, I will tell you all about it. I will try to not drag on the story too long. Yeah, don't. uh, Try to get all the details (laughs) in. But, okay, everyone knows today was the release of a game called God of War, and I'm super excited for this game for a long time, and I've been looking to upgrade for a PS4 Pro, and lo and behold, God of War Edition PS4 Pro came out today. So I pre-ordered this one, I don't know, way back, and today it was being delivered. Uh, I was at work, and the delivery came, but I was not at home to receive the delivery. So I came home to a card on the door saying, uh, we showed up and nobody was here. You can pick it up at this address after 11 a.m. So I'm like, sweet. I'm going to get ready. I'm going to go get it. I'm going to play it. I'm going to be so happy. So I went and got ready. Then I picked up the card, ready to go at the door. And it said, after 11 a.m. on April the 23rd, which is Monday. So my world kind of got crushed right there. So I called them and the lady said, okay, there's a good, well, not a good chance. There's a chance that they might drop it off at the the, how, the outlet before eight o'clock when it closes. So I'm like, okay, if I'm waiting outside when they show up, can I get it? And she's like, maybe like, we don't know if it's possible. So Then I'm like, well, I'll just wait and see, because she said there would be a notification if it got dropped off. So I didn't get the notification, and then I checked, and then I had a notification, and it said, it's out for delivery. So I'm like, sweet, I'm going to get it. It's going to come to me. It's out for delivery. So I'm like, well, I'm not going to miss it this time. So I went downstairs. I waited in my vehicle like some crazy person, just stalking vehicles coming by, and I'm like, well, I'm going to give them a call and just to see if they give me some details. So I called and the gentleman is like, uh, there was some error. Basically, he scanned it to say that it's being brought to the warehouse, not that it's out for delivery. So he's like, so I'm like, well, what if I go to the warehouse? Can I get it? And he's like, actually, they're not going to return to the warehouse until after eight o'clock and it'll be closed. And there's no way I can get it. I'm like, no, you got to be kidding me. He's like, yeah, unfortunately, you're going to have to wait till Monday. So then I'm like, I'm calling back. I hung up with him and I called back and I got this awesome lady. And she looked into it and she had me on hold for probably 20 minutes to half an hour. And she told me that actually it just got delivered at the drop off point. So she's like, if you can get there for eight o'clock before it closes, you can have it. So I'm like, I'm I'm in my car now. I'm 10 minutes away. I'm going to go. So I went there and I picked it up and I got it. So, yes, I have it. And when someone tells you, no, you can't get it, it's not possible. Don't accept that. You call back and you get somebody else. And it just proves determination allowed me to get this console. And I'm so stoked to play this tomorrow because I don't think I'll be able to play it tonight. So that's my story. I got it. I can't wait. Graham, you're such a liar. My God, dude. I know. So Graham was like, (laughs) Graham was like taking us along for a ride here all afternoon. He's like, oh, I didn't get it. I'm so mad. I'm so angry. Graham, you (laughs) will stream this game tomorrow for like 15 hours. (laughs) That's I going will, to happen. Now. I am We're not happy with you, Graham. I'm not happy with you right <laughs> but now. But originally, uh, when I told you guys, that was before I called the lady back. All yeah. hope was given up, and I was in my car, and I was determined, and I called. <laughs> so, yes. Like, we're I worried about you. We're, we're thinking yeah. that you're, like, traversing all over Canada, trying to, like, <laughs> go to stores and get this. 
And, yeah. you know, because you've been known to do that. Yes. It, no, the crazy was almost coming out of me, and I prevailed. So good news. People. All right, that's good awesome. News. So happy story. We're, we're happy to hear that, Graham. Liar. Anyway. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of mad. I'm actually mad. <laughs> <laughs> so well, before I we get... I it up because I'm like, I'm going to surprise them. <laughs> surprise <laughs> them. <laughs> that's cool. That's really awesome, though. So yes. before we get to something special you're going to do with that tomorrow... Um, I want to introduce our other co-host. Um, so, Dilly Dilly, Stephen, how are you? <laughs> well, I'm doing great. Unlike Graham, I bought my PS4 console from a brick and mortar store, so I didn't have to worry you about can rub delivery it all in issues. Now. It's okay. And and so <laughs> it was funny though. I have a funny little anecdote about what happened. And and so I went. To, I had class last night. Uh, and so I went to class, and I had my two math classes and my last math class ended about 7:20, And so I went to GameStop to get the receipt, the final receipt so I could pick it up at nine o'clock. And then I went and got some food and went home. And then I went back at nine and I walk in the door and I'm just like standing there for three seconds. And I hear, is that Steven? And like it clicked, but it didn't like whose voice it was. And I look and lo and behold, right there is my professor from the last math class I had that got out two hours earlier in the line to pick up the PS4 or to pick up God of War. And she also uh, happened to be getting the God of War PS4 Pro, which I thought was just kind of funny. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was, it was weird seeing my <laughs> my professor at the GameStop I shop at. And mind you, my GameStop that I shop at is not like close to the school. It's not far. It's like 20 minutes away. But I, I it was just really funny that i saw her at the store after i just saw her in class to pick up god of war it was was a funny little thing and i got to play some god of war and i've been loving it and we'll get to impressions later um but grant or tyler how have you been i've been pretty good uh didn't get to play a ton this week and i didn't get all the excitement that you guys had around the ps4 (laughs) pro because i have one uh that i got last year it's an awesome console like it's fun and I, I still think the Xbox One X is just a better console, and it objectively is. But we're going to get into um, the difference between the two consoles, and that's the games. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I played some Sea of Thieves last weekend, had a good time with that. Um, still enjoying that game. I know there's a lot of hate out there for it, but I think sometimes that the, the loudest voices are always the most negative ones. Yes, and that dominates the conversation. So, I I don't know. I think a lot of people are still enjoying it. I'm part of some Discord groups where people post pictures from Sea Thieves every single day, and they're having a great time with the game. So, I, uh, I I'm liking it. I'm still having fun with it. So yeah, that that's been me. But I want to make a, an announcement. So, we try to find new ways to engage our community all the time, and we have Facebook, which we love you to join. Go over and join the Gaming Hub forums there. We have Twitch, which we're streaming on live as we do this podcast. The Twitch is uh, TXH Gaming Hub. You can follow us on Twitter at TXH Gaming Hub. But we want to tell you that we have added a YouTube channel. And Graham, apparently now tomorrow, (laughs) will be doing and posting an unboxing of his God of War PS4 Pro. Yes, I will. Yep. And Steve will be actually doing Let's Plays of God of War, and the first one's already up. Yes, it is. So, if you go over to YouTube and you search for the Gaming Hub Podcast, and uh, please subscribe to us. We'd really appreciate that. And let's build a great community there, too. So, we've got some videos up already. We had some stuff done and ready before we uh, launched and announced it to the community. So, there's something there for you to watch. But we'll be putting up stuff every single week. And we'll be scheduling it out so we get stuff up almost daily for you to watch, enjoy, and comment on. So we'd appreciate it if you head over there, uh, the Gaming Hub Podcast on YouTube, and hit subscribe. We'd really appreciate that. So with that, gentlemen, and uh, and by gentlemen, I mean Steve and the liar, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> Got you guys good. You did. Let's jump into news. So in today we're going to be focused on some of the smaller games out there. Uh, and we're going to start with this little startup game that we heard is okay called Call of Duty. 
they're going to have, apparently, Battle Royale mode this year. But I think, more importantly, there's talk of no campaign in Call of Duty Black Ops 4 this year. Guys, your thoughts on that? Well, first and foremost, if they're saying it will likely not have it, I hope that they don't just get a whole bunch of backlash and people are like, they really want a single-player campaign. So let's just spew something out, slap on single-player campaign, because we will know that you guys slap this together. So if you're going to do this, then you better stick to your guns and put out a kick-ass battle royale that people are going to enjoy. Because I'd rather you put all your time and effort into making this battle royale experience optimal than try to throw in like a, an half ass single player campaign because yeah. because people they'll know right and like i said the big thing about call of duty is people like playing online multiplayer so yep. i don't think this will crush them by no means and the fact that they're going to offer something like battle royale and i don't know if they're going to do that kind of like a campaign style battle royale we don't really know no. the details but I would say, yeah, if you're going to do it, go all in. Don't try to throw in a campaign just for filler. Okay, so fair enough. And this topic has caused a lot of chatter in our community this week. And, you know, for example, Storm Chaser uh, sent us a message and asked, you know, what do you think about Black Ops 4 not having a campaign and possibly having Battle Royale? So, Graham, we kind of heard your thoughts on that. Steve, what do you think? Yeah, um, I don't really care that it's not going to have a single-player campaign. But I will care if they it, like offer a campaign as like DLC and try to charge me fifteen dollars for it, because yeah, there's no way in hell I'd pay for it in the first place. But that would just be ridiculous. Because I know a few episodes ago, Tyler, we had talked about the, the thought process that maybe Call of Duty would go to a model where you pay like forty five dollars for the multiplayer only and then if you want the campaign you pay like an extra 20 or something like that i can't remember the exact specifics yep. of that but it seems to me that they're going the route of we're going to charge you 60 for multiplayer only and then we might give you a campaign later as dlc now that's not confirmed and that is just my opinion but i don't see why they wouldn't do that yeah. and i could totally see them doing that so oh, i could too i because I don't really care, though. I, I haven't finished a Call of Duty campaign since Modern Warfare 3, I think, was the last one I finished. Um, they're just not that good. <laughs> so Like, they, oh, like two hours in, I'm like, ah, I'd rather play multiplayer. <laughs> so I'll, I'll tell you this. like I'm going to be the dissenting opinion here. <laughs> I actually I play the Call of Duty campaigns pretty regularly. I even finished the Ghosts campaign. Well, I like that one, though. Yeah, but that was because, well, then you've played one since Modern Warfare 3. I didn't finish it, though. Okay. Tyler, come on. Okay. I, I I well, yeah, you don't finish, like, anything. Yeah. I don't, that's so, right. I don't finish but, much. <laughs> I, I actually, <laughs> that campaign was not good in an objective sense, but I'm a dog person, and Riley's awesome. So, you know, I, I cared more about the dog than I did about any of the characters you know, the human characters in the story. Um, the story was pretty poorly put together. Um, Call of Duty campaigns are basically Michael Bay movies that you play rather than watch. But Basically. Yeah. I actually very much enjoyed the World War II campaign. I had a good time with it. But that said, like, the I finished the one with uh, Kevin Spacey. It was fine. Like, it wasn't like mind blowing or anything, but it was okay. But it's a hell of a lot better than what Battlefield put out as a kind of campaign last time for Battlefield One. And speaking of Battlefield, they're supposedly developing Battle Royale as well. So yeah. <laughs> let me ask this: Like, do you think Battle Royale is a fad, or do you think it's going to catch on? Um, I think it's going to catch on. I think it's already caught on. I don't think we're... I think yeah, we're I guess catch on's the wrong way of putting it. Maybe, like, stay as a mainstay is, is what I'm asking. Yeah. Or yeah, I, I've honestly didn't... Like, I've always kind of wondered why Battle Royales were not a thing um, for a long time. Because I was thinking, like, when Hunger Games became popular, when it came out in 2011, uh, the books, at least, the movies were later, uh, like, I was like, the Hunger Games would make a pretty fun multiplayer game. 
And I really think it was just the technology that was holding it back. And then Pub Pubga, just for you, Graham, because you're a liar, came out. And Battle and then Fortnite came out like pretty much right on its heels. And those were the two really uh popular games. Now I know there was one before that called The Culling that didn't quite make it as big, but I used to watch people play it on Twitch and it, it looked really fun. It was like the it actually was kind of exactly like the movie Battle Royale, if you've ever seen it, the J Japanese flick. Yes, it's I pretty did. good. Is that but like Casino I, Royale? or <laughs> No, it's like the Hunger Games, but okay. the original. <laughs> the original and yeah, way exactly. more dark. But I, I'm surprised it hadn't caught on before, and I totally understand why it's why these big games like Battlefield and Call of Duty are, are going to have it. And I think Call of Duty and Battlefield are the two that will – if they do it well, will take over as the the go to because they're the big guys already. You know, like okay, Fortnite's not it's big now, but I think if Call of Duty has a good battle royale, you might see more people going that route. Just you know, my thoughts. I think it's gonna stick around forever. I, I feel like, especially for the next like five years, we're gonna get battle royales out the wazoo. Graham, yes, like. Uh, a few pod or uh, episodes ago, we uh, you guys asked me what was going trends, and I said battle royale, and it doesn't seem to be going away. Uh, next thing, there's gonna be zombie battle royale. There probably already is zombie battle royale. <laughs> there probably will be. <laughs> but yeah, it seems to be a going trend, and like these companies or games like jumping in on the battle royale. Like, I don't know if they're focusing entirely on it or it's just going to be, like, just so they can say, oh, and we have Battle Royale for you Battle Royale fans. Because when I yeah. think Battlefield Five, like, and then Battle Royale, I don't know how that's going to transition. Like, they never know it's anything about not having a single-player campaign. So if they're going to focus just on Battle Royale, that would kind of disappoint me because I'm like, maybe you guys should maybe do a campaign or something like that and maybe let Call of Duty have the Battle Royale. But I know it, it's basically it's competition, right? So they're going to be like, well, they're going to do it. We're going to do it. And I know they're like competition is healthy and it's going to make the other one be better. So I'd rather have two to choose from and play the better one than just have one that... I don't like, and then that's the only one I'm stuck with, right? If I buy either one of these games. But so, I think Battlefield could stay out of the game. They don't necessarily need to go that route. Well, let me ask this then. Do you think that, because obviously, you know, this is a copycat industry, right? And yes. when somebody catches on with something good, it's like, it's like movies, right? So I think somebody makes a good volcano movie, and then there's like six <laughs> volcano movies in the next two yes. years. Okay, but I'm pretty sure Volcano and Dante's Inferno, the other movie you were talking Dante's about. Peak. Dante's, yeah, Dante's Peak. Peak. Dante's Peak. Dante's You're right, Graham. You're right. God, yeah. I hate when you correct me. <laughs> or um, I think those came out at the same, like really similar time. Like the Prestige and the Illusionist were like within like two weeks. That's and true. Olympus has fallen and White House down were pretty close to the same time. Well, then let it's me not... then let me say superhero. Yes, that I agree with. In fact, I just right. watched Justice League, and oh my gosh, it's like the Avengers, but six years later. <laughs> yeah. Um. So you liked it. I did like it, yeah. but I understand its issues, and I didn't say it was a sure. good movie. I just enjoyed it. Well, that's uh, totally fine. Sometimes there's movies that you know aren't great, but you just enjoy them. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like the uh, movie, the movie Kick Ass was like that for me. Oh, but um, I thought that was a decent movie, though. Like, I didn't it's think not it was bad. bad. It's not bad. I'm just saying it's not great, right? And and also, um, the A Team, the movie, the A Team. That's like guilty pleasure movie of mine. The new one, like the yeah. one with Liam. Ne I love yeah. that movie. Like, it's not good. That stupid tank scene, though. <laughs> yes. It's not good, but it's fun. It is so fun. Man, I kind of so, want to watch that tonight. I haven't seen that I in know. forever. I love that movie. But anyway, like, <laughs> it's a copycat industry. But do you think, because we just saw Radical Heights get released, at least an early release, right? It's not a final game. But now we've got three out there. You've got Fortnite, which has taken kind of the lead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you got PUBG. And now you have Radical Heights. And now you're going to get the behemoths coming in. Yes. Yeah. So do you think it's going to hurt games like Fortnite? Because guys like Ninja on Twitch have like blown up because of that. Um, well, and not that they weren't big before. They were. So, but they've blown up because of that. What do you think? I, 
I'll go first here, Graham, if you don't mind. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I I don't think they care. <laughs> I think they're making a shit ton of money <laughs> right now. So, you know, they're going to cast in when Battlefield and Call of Duty come out. And who cares? Because they're going to, like I said, have a lot of money. And I think people are still going to go back. Because I, I think Battle Royales are going to be like the side gig instead of the main thing. So, like, Call of Duty and Battlefield will still have the multiplayer as the focus. And now instead of a campaign, which was always, like, the side thing, now it'll be the Battle Royale mode. And also, what, before I forget, I think if I was a betting man, I would say Battlefield would have the better Battle Royale mode than Call of Duty just because of the weapons and, like, the vehicles and all that. I think it would make more fun, um, make, make a more fun Battle Royale mode. That's yeah, you know, that's a good call. I like that. Uh, but that, Graham, that's what makes Fortnite a little different too, right? Yes, because you have the that, building. The building yeah. aspect, sure. Yeah, and I always thought the cartoony stuff would succeed more than the uh, real than, life. Uh, like realistic and, and by, version. By, by the way, Graham, before you go, somebody just called out uh, watching us live that Olympus has fallen. Great guilty pleasure movie. I agree. That movie's fun. But, Graham, what do you think? Like, do you think that Battlefield and Call of Duty getting into this is going to take down games like Fortnite and uh, PUBG? No, I don't. And I pretty much agree with everything that Steven said. He made some really good points. But yeah, like Fortnite is like Battle Royale is its main focus. It doesn't do anything else that I know of anyways, because I've never played it. And like I said, Battlefield and Call of Duty, and more of a side thing that they have Battle Royale, just because of, and that might even get more people to play Fortnite because yeah. they'll buy Battlefield or Call of Duty, and they know all they've heard all this about Fortnite and Battle Royale, but they don't own it even <laughs> though it's free. Um, but they play mm -hmm. it on that, and they're like, "Wow, I kind of like this mode, so let me go play." And I would say, besides Fortnite. Uh, PUBG is a game that more reflects this type because there's no building in Call of Duty and there's no building in Battlefield. So right. I, I think it might bring people like, oh, I'm going to try PUBG, especially for people on Xbox because it's not on PlayStation yet, which I'm sure it's going to come eventually. It will. So I think more people will try PUBG because of that. And PUBG focuses mainly on the Battle Royale aspect. So I, I don't think they'll take it over or take away from it. They might even like bring more people into the Battle Royale, and then they'll research. And even that other game that you just said, because um, that's basically ATVs and uh, Battle Royale. So that might yeah. take off really well. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm actually curious to see how that game uh, does and stuff like that. And uh, do we know if it's going to be free or if it's a paid game? Which one? The, the third one you said. Uh, Radical Lewis Heights? Heights. I, yeah, I'm actually not 100 percent sure on that, so I apologize. But and th there's a fourth one too that you forgot, Tyler. The uh... oh shit, what is the name? Of it? <laughs> well, you literally, forgot you, it too. Apparently, apparently, I, apparently it too. I did. It's the one in the they showed it at E3 last year in the snow, like the Darwin Project. Oh right? yes, Darwin yeah. Project. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. That is also a battle royale esque game. I don't think it's as big. I think yeah. it's yeah, it's kind of like an Overwatch style game, right? Yeah, or like a te like I think it's like a ten person free for all yeah. as opposed to like a. And see, uh, speaking of Overwatch, so like, was Overwatch going to do a Battle Royale? Is, um, oh, another game I just had, oh, Titanfall. Would Titanfall do a Battle Royale? Like Titanfall would be interesting. I don't know if they That would make off. a very good Battle Royale, though. Like, imagine yeah, would. a 64-person, like... Oh, my God, yeah. Oh, that would be crazy. I That would bring me right back to that series, and I love Titanfall. Titanfall but, 3. Yeah. You, you'll see it. Yeah. So, it do, it certainly doesn't hurt games like Fortnite that no. they're free. They're free to play. Yeah. Right? But, come on. Fortnite has made 20 or $25 million. It's one of those two. On mobile since they launched on mobile. Yeah. And they've what, made a shit weeks, ton of money off of the loot crates or whatever they have. Yeah. And I'll give them uh, massive credit. They did loot crates right. Um, it's like you want to support them so you buy it as opposed to like feeling like you need to buy them to be yes. a bit more competitive at the game looking at you star wars uh -huh. uh. <laughs> but they have ewoks now 
Oh yeah, because that, that's gonna get me back. I forgot that I even owned it. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that it was a game until I saw the backwards compatibility releases and I saw Star Wars Battlefront Two, like the real one. Oh man, yeah. if they offer like servers in that game. Oh, oh man. I will never. Uh, I don't care about the graphics. I will. Yeah, I'd much rather play the OG Xbox version of, of uh, Battlefront Two online than the new one. Well, because it's better. Uh, well, that is, is true. Embarrassing that you know what? Well over a decade later, like fifteen years later, they can't make a better game. That's Had a better campaign too, or whatever you want to call did. it. Did I enjoyed it? I remember playing it. It's all right. Yeah. Anything else on on the battle royale aspect, guys? Nope. No. I, I hope you're not sick of it because they're gonna be they're gonna be coming oh, for a while. It's the new zombie mode. Is it is? It's the new zombies. And Graham is gonna be super happy because I know eventually there's gonna be a game that has zombies in the map along with other human yeah. controlled players. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and that's great. gonna be Graham's favorite game. It'll be Graham's game. dream. I can't wait. <laughs> Can I have it now, please, please? So, all right, let's uh, let's move on to another game that came out today. God of War, and this game's getting awesome freaking reviews. Yes, and by awesome, I don't mean nine. By awesome, I mean multiple ten out of tens. Yes. So, Steve, you've had a chance to play it a little bit. And I want just kind of give us a brief rundown. Uh, obviously, no spoilers, no spoilers but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but just kind of your thoughts and impressions on the game. You played about two hours of it so far. So, what do you you know? What are you feeling on the game so far? Do you think the tens yeah. are are valid? What are your thoughts? All right, so I'm not going to Zelda this up here, but I know for a fact that this game is a ten out of ten. Like I can tell an hour in, and because I've, I've I basically played to get impressions and then I recorded the video today. So I had to redo basically everything I did last night to, to play through for the video that's going up on YouTube. Um, the combat, super smooth, really fun. And I can see how, like, as the game progresses, it's going to advance. So it's not overly difficult to, like, you don't have to memorize, like, 70,000 button combinations to pull off a dope move. But it's it's going to like branch out and I can already tell that the game looks beautiful. Yesterday I was playing in 4k today. I was playing in 1080p because the capture card I have is only in 1080p, unfortunately, but it still looks amazing. Like it's one of the best looking games. The, the characters I'm already invested 40 minutes in. I like Kratos, like, holy shit. I didn't think they could do it, but they made him like still, to his roots, but you you kind of like you see how he's he's advanced in age. I, I don't know how to explain this well without going too in depth. But play the game and you'll understand what I'm talking about. The um, there's a lot of exploration without making it so open world like Legend of Zelda, and I don't think every game needs to be like that. No, and it's just I I'm already like like I, I want to not do anything for the next four days, like nothing, and just play this game. That's how good it is. It's addicting. Its hooks are set in me. I can't wait to go play this game again. So let me ask you this. You replayed today what you played yesterday, right? Yes. Did you mind that at all? Not really. <laughs> no, that, I, I, that's the that's the trademark of a great game, right? Yeah. Like the cutscenes were all the same. Like I mean, or th and actually, that's another thing. There's not really cutscenes. They just kind of you flow from gameplay to scene, and I love that because it doesn't take you out of the immersion, um, and it's also quicker. So I, it's just I had no issue redoing it, and I actually found something I missed the first time playing it. Um, but yeah, I I already think like I can see. I think this game will win Game of the Year. Like. I agree with a lot of Pierce that the, that Red Dead Redemption Two has its work cut out because oh this game is going to be tough to beat and don't I'm only now Spider Man too don't forget Spider Man yeah but I don't think Spider Man will I think Spider Man's going to be more like the fun romp type of game you know yes, like just go mess around and have a good time I think this is a serious game 
that tells a fantastic story with great characters. Yeah. And, and I can't remember, I can't remember who tweeted it out, but basically what he said was like the, um, the combat of like dark souls, but a little more user friendly, like the story of the last of us mixed with like the exploration of like uncharted mixed with some other thing. And it was like all these great games and it's all in one. And I totally understand that after playing it for an hour. And I am so excited to continue going this game. Like, no, I'm going to throw aside most everything else. Like I'm going to be putting a lot of time into this game and yeah. Yeah, I just want to go play it right now. We, we've it's had people of, go ahead, go ahead, Graham. I'm sorry. I would say it's a sign of a great game too. Like when you're doing like comparison and other people, and they they compare it with like five other amazing games. Say yeah. like take elements from this and this yep. and this this. Like that is the sure sign of a great game. Yeah, and and I think too, like even going simpler than that. The sign of a great game is like when you're at work or you're doing whatever. Like all you want to do is go home and play the game. Mm-hmm. That was me today. Yep. <laughs> like I love my job. Um, I, like I I love my job. I love going to work. And today I was like, okay, I like being here, but okay, well, you know, it's it's about time for God of War. It's about time for God of War. Like, <laughs> I kind of want to go home so I can go play like two hours before yeah. we start recording. <laughs> And, and if we're at this point when I didn't have the system sitting in a box next to me, I'd be very angry and have this, have this discussion. <laughs> but I'm glad that I have it and or I don't have you, to bring this angriness. So um, that's good. You guys talk about it all yeah. you want because I will be playing it tomorrow and I'm super stoked for it. Yeah, yeah. Graham, you have more patience than me doing this um, unboxing video because I'm not <laughs> shitting you. I came home yesterday and I start like ripping the box apart. Like I didn't tear anything, but you know, I like got my knife out, cut the little plastic, start pulling everything out like as quick as possible. Like I was having, I had, a, I had to go use the restroom and I was like, nope, I'm holding it. This is getting <laughs> set up. I'm installing this game. <laughs> like I didn't take my shoes off, nothing. <laughs> I want to play it. And, and I'm like, I, it's great. And like the last game that sunk its hooks in and I knew I was playing amazing right from the start was Legend of Zelda yeah, Breath last of year, Wild. Breath of the Wild. When I got mm. that game over the summer, I, I, that was another one where it was like, I love what I do, but I want to stay home and play <laughs> Zelda. And this is that game. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, that, that's exactly how I was with Zelda and, I got a feeling I'm going to have the exact same experience, so I'm definitely psyched for it. So, real quick, I just want to give Sony some praise, because they're early exclusives for the PS4, when you think back to, like, Killzone, and then Mm -hmm. you think about Infamous Second Son, which wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. Like, those games were fine, but the best early exclusive release they had, in my opinion was the re the re-release of the last of us but now like the stuff they've put out lately between uncharted and this game and everything we've seen about spider-man is amazing yeah like they deserve some credit and some praise for creating an experience and creating hype and energy and enthusiasm about games that's real and legit and they deliver on it it, it just so, goes to show that, um, <laughs> wow, I just lost my train of thought. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, goes, I'll just it say, goes to show something. <laughs> I'll say that one of the, I, I disagree a little with you, Tyler. Now, I don't know okay. if you counted, a, but a year after the game came out, Bloodborne came out, and that was an amazing game. Granted, it was for a more niche audience, those who like the brutally difficult games. Yeah. Right. But Bloodborne is a game that I know tons of people loved and people that even didn't like the dark souls series loved that game sure no you're right but there was a time in this generation current generation where when it comes when it came to exclusives xbox dominated that conversation yes but that is not the case anymore nope hasn't been for the last two years i remember my train of thought now i was gonna say so just like with xbox we're talking about oh there's no exclusives and stuff like that then just be patient and wait and because PlayStation did it right now they have all these yeah. amazing exclusives so everyone's like I forgive you you got great exclusives right. so I'm thinking this is going to happen with Xbox too because we are selfish we want great games after great games and this and this and this so be patient and with 
patience comes great some no comes great games. <laughs> Well, you know, well, you know, well, Graham, that's a you know PS4 why I'm, game there, Graham. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were quoting. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Graham, you know why I'm that way though? Because I just spent five hundred dollars. Yeah. On a premium console. No, I agree, Tyler. It's it's ridiculous. Like, I I don't think we're selfish for wanting amazing games on the console. Yeah. Like, I've been with Xbox since. Well, I've owned every single Xbox there has been, yeah, but I I've, I've been with the Xbox like. Since 2007 um, was when I got my 360 and Halo 3, and I've I haven't looked back. Like I've had PS3s in the past for um, like because I wanted Kingdom Hearts mostly the remaster. Sure. Because those games are amazing, but like I I need some exclusive amazing games, and like I've mentioned many times, uh, an RPG here or there wouldn't 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 hurt. Lost Odyssey was amazing, and I could use a second one. But well, and, that, and that's, that's where Xbox really falls flat, right? Is in yeah. that realm, yeah, they, that genre. They, they needed to keep Fable alive, I think. First, well, and, and they they will because there's already talk about development of a new Fable game. Yeah, but it never should have but, been talked about being canceled in the first and, place. Yes, yeah, and not canceled. making. Well, they shouldn't have departed so much from what made that series popular. Yes, that is true. Exactly. Fable Two was awesome. Fable but, Three was. Yeah. Was good, not as good. Yeah, but, but Fable, like, Fable Two... Legends was a totally different kind of game. Yeah. Yes. But it was I, a completely I... different game set in that world, and that didn't resonate with fans. And I don't blame them. Yeah. No. As soon as that... I saw it, I was completely let down too, because I yeah, thoroughly yeah. enjoyed the second two, because I didn't finish the first one, so I really can't speak volumes for it. But the fact that the other two games came from it then it's got to be a great game. And when I saw that they completely changed their whole, like, plans and, like, their blueprints for it, I was disappointed. Like, if they still released that, but still had, like, Fable 4 in the works or Fable 4 came out alongside it or whatever, then that would have been fine. But you made it a free online and you completely changed the format, that didn't bode well. Well, let me ask this. So we all agree we love Xbox, right? Excuse me. What was the last game Xbox released that had a lot of hype around it that delivered? That's a tough question. <laughs> Halo Five. Yeah. <laughs> for, no, for no, no, no. That that didn't deliver because the everybody just completely hated on the campaign. Then Forza Horizon. Yeah, but yeah, I guess Rise of the Tomb Raider. If you want to do a timed exclusive. Yeah, but that game sold terribly. That it, sold Forza would be it the sold last terribly. One. Really? Yeah, such a great because game. it released on the same day as Fallout Four. I know. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's a fantastic game. We're gonna get. We're gonna talk about Rise of the Tomb Raider again a little later. Mm-hmm. But yeah, when's the last time? Because see, these had a ton of hype around it, and I I really enjoyed the game, but. It fell when short for at, some people, though. Yeah, when you look at the court of public opinion, it's not unanimous. Whereas yeah, For- Forza lived up to its hype. And it did, especially the, the Horizon, Horizon games. Horizon, not not seven. Yeah, Sorry. all those Forza Seven, I'll tell you, is a lot of fun. It really is. See, I didn't like it, and I used to like the mainline Forza games. I played probably thirty minutes of it, and I'm like, eh, I'd rather play Horizon. Okay, and that's fair. That's totally fair because I get it. Like you know, Forza the the mainline Forza games, you're doing the same tracks kind of over and over. Yeah, three three has definitely more like variety, and variety is the spice of life. And I'm yeah. pumped to see what Forza Horizon Four brings, especially being in 4K as opposed mm-hmm. to like just remastered in 4K or whatever they they did to make Forza 3 4K. Because, yeah. like, I thought in 1080p the snow looked, like, sick when you would snow it yeah. on your car. Like, that game could break some graphical, like, have barriers. some graphical achievements. <laughs> yes, barriers yes. And such. Yeah, no, I agree. But if that's the best thing you're putting forward, if you're putting Forza Horizon 4 up against God of War. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's a no contest. True. Totally no. true. No, I mean, so, I get it. And and we we say it again out of love for Xbox because we love Xbox, yes. and we want we so badly we've all bought the Xbox One X all three of us. Yeah, 
we just want something awesome to say I can play this on this console and this console is the only place I can play it. Yes. Take out so, the PC stuff. I know there's yep. people out there like, well, you can play on PC anyway. I don't know. I, just consoles. Yeah. So when we keep talking about this, like how Xbox doesn't have this, doesn't have exclusives, like there's a lot of pressure on them and the ball is in their court for E3 to, they have to run away with this. If they don't, then people are just going to be even more discouraged and people are going to start regretting buying their consoles and people are going to stop buying their the consoles and they're going to shift over to uh, PS4 because they're going to see, wow, now I have this great Spider-Man game coming out. Well, and then, yeah. So yeah, like I, I think they feel the pressure too, because it's not just our, our thoughts that we're thinking this way. Like uh, most people out there are thinking this way. Mm-hmm. Like there's so much evidence of that online. We'll like, we'll talk about it a bit later too. And so I think they're feeling the pressure. So I think they got to deliver big. If they don't, they're going to suffer. I agree. This E3 is really pivotal because based on this, on what we've seen so far of God of War, based on what we saw from um, Horizon Zero Dawn, based on what we saw from Bloodborne, based on what we saw from Uncharted 4, that Sony can deliver exclusives. Mm-hmm. And even MLB deserves credit in there. It's the best sports game pretty much every year. Yeah. And then if we keep talking about top exclusives, then we like go into the realm of Nintendo. Like we'll be like Zelda and Mario yeah. Odyssey, right? And like Xbox is not up on that high list of exclusives. Yeah. And I think Microsoft's strategy right now isn't so much, you know, getting people that well, they they want people who have the original Xbox to upgrade to the X, sure. But I think they're trying to appeal to people who have a PS4 to say, yeah, you also need this because it's the most powerful console. Mm -hmm. But what's the compelling argument to get them to buy it other than to say the games you can already play on the console you have will just look better? Yeah. And And honestly, they're lucky. So, really. (laughs) Well, Well, in in some cases, dramatically so. Well, I mean, okay, but compared it to the Pro, like. Is there really that much difference? Like there is a difference, but is it that is it enough to warrant spending five hundred dollars on a system? Yeah. If you well, already have a pro, absolutely not. Yeah. yeah. I would say at least the one X as a four K Blu ray player. If it didn't even have that, then that would be another one up for PlayStation. So thank goodness yeah. PlayStation didn't put a four K Blu ray in it because it well. actually gives <laughs> Xbox yeah, a little bit yeah. of a leg up. Yeah, and it's not even thank goodness because we're not necessarily cheering for one over the other. We no, all now have both more of a the balance, One X though. and the Pro. Yeah, right. It's so, true. yes, after after tomorrow days. I will. Yep. <laughs> I don't well, want to have get. it, Graham. <laughs> yes, yes, I have yes, it. So, it's in your possession. Although I kind of sort of hope that Unless it's an empty you know, it doesn't turn on for you. <laughs> I agree. <What? laughs> That's not nice. <laughs> well, it's not nice to lie either. By the way, but, Graham, uh, it wasn't a lie. Turn, it's a trick. Just so you know, <laughs> the, you can't turn the console on by holding the controller button down. You have to actually press the button because I like freaked out when I plugged everything in and I tried to turn the console on when my controller was plugged in okay. by pressing the little PS button. No, you have to press the power button and it's no, hidden. No, so good fits. But I'm, I'm probably I'm smarter than that. I figured first time, first time ever, you don't turn on the console with the controller. Why not? So. I did it with my Xbox, I think. Pretty sure. In fact, yeah, I, I did I, too. Yeah, but, I did. I didn't think... <laughs> you, you didn't... Yeah. Shut anyway, up. Anyway, we're going down the rabbit <laughs> hole. Let's not do that. Yeah. So, all right. <laughs> but, you know, like I said, you know, we're, we don't say this stuff to hate on Xbox. We don't. We Definitely not. desperately want to be, you know, really happy with what Xbox is doing. And there's a lot of good stuff they're doing. So, you know, just going to mention again, you know, Washington State's one of our biggest downloaded states. So, Phil, if you're out there listening, we love you. We, <laughs> we love do. You. We do love you, Phil. You're the best. You are the best. <laughs> and, and honestly, like, Phil Spencer and Major Nelson are awesome ambassadors of gaming, period. Like, not just for Xbox, but for video games. And that kind of transitions me into the next thing I want to talk about, guys, which 
a game like God of War, it's an event when a game like that comes out that's really special. And it brings out the best in people like we saw, like prominent people from Xbox, including Phil Spencer, including Major Nelson and others, and prominent people from Nintendo, like tweeting and sending out messages to Sony saying, hey, congratulations on an awesome game and a great release. Because God of War is projected to maybe be the best selling launch game at launch this generation which is saying something because a lot of people think single player is going away call you know activision thinks it's so much that they're taking campaign out of call of duty until now the previous or the top two launch selling games are um, both multiplayer games destiny the original and the division so it's saying something. But to see these other companies reach out and say, hey, that's awesome. Congratulations. Great job. Can't wait to play it. That's great. You see the best come out in people. Unfortunately, it also brings out the worst in some. And yes. we see people and, you know, I'm going to call it out because we've called out Sony fans in the past too. Xbox fans getting on and trashing on the game just because it's not on their console. And, to be fair, Sony fans getting on and attacking reviews that aren't as high as they think it should be. But we also see some other organizations that brings up the worst of them. You know, just this week, we, we all read, as an example, you know, a review of God of War 4 that scored it significantly lower than what the game got from pretty much everywhere else. And that uh, brought in a lot of hate from people, quite a bit. Yeah. And but here's the thing I want to say about it. And we're not going to mention the website or the person who wrote it because there's enough, like, venom out there already. But, first of all, the review was 750 words. Like, how do you review a AAA game? Yes. A massive major release. Like, one of the biggest... This is in the top two releases of the year. God of War and Red Dead Redemption 2 are, in my opinion the two biggest releases of 2018. How do you honestly sum up that game in 750 words? And we're talking about this full disclosure. We, you know, I know the, the person involved with the site that posted it. We're not affiliated with them, but I know the person and had a conversation about it. Gave some feedback. We all did. And the consensus was that, you know, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take this down for a couple reasons that we'll get into. But it didn't come down. And we talked about reviews on this show a few episodes ago. And kind of the ethics and reviews, and we talked about it in the context of Sea of Thieves. Where people were posting reviews like at launch for a game that's super multiplayer focused. You got to let it be in the wild and see how it performs and and have interactions to to see what the game is. A game like God of War that's super story driven. You're going to tell me you're going to sum up that game in 750 words. No. Yeah. And you're going to do it in such a vague fashion that honestly it doesn't even seem like you played it. Maybe potentially taking some things that other sites said and putting a review together to get clicks. And I get it. I get the that feeling of seeing your review get read and seeing your review get clicks. But I'll tell you this. I posted my review of Sea of Thieves and, and I, I had some feedback from people who thought I scored it. A little too high. 
But you know what? I posted it like 10 days after the game came out because I wanted to give it time in the wild to play it. And my review was 2,200 words, I think. And and it, I could speak to things in the game, specific things in the game. And this one didn't have that. And I get the, the want to just drive clicks and drive views and drive traffic. But this is the stuff that makes people did not have trust for video game journalism. And I've yes. talked long enough, so I want to turn it over to you. Steve, I want to throw it to you, and you tell me what you think about this. And again, I don't want this to be an attack session on a specific like thing, but in general, what are your thoughts? You read it. You saw it. So I think I could have wrote more than 750 words about just the hour or technically two hours I played of God of War an hour a piece. So I played the same thing twice. So two hours total. I, I probably could have came up with uh, more than 750 words. It was like, it was definitely impressions. It was like if you took my impressions uh, from earlier and just expanded it a little bit, like just like wrote some more words down, but didn't go in depth in anything. You just ex like explain like, 20 different things and then boom this happens this happens this happens this happens review done yeah it was so, it was definitely a click bait type article the irony is it got, well i mean not to toot my own horn here but my my kingdom come deliverance got more clicks than than that review but the comments especially on on a certain on N n4g were were not very nice though i didn't see anything that was overtly like crossing the line like they were all well within the realm of like like we're kind of pissed that this is a review they were focused on the work and not attacking the person yeah I think, and, right yeah yeah and and i i i could see how some people might have attacked the person because some people are stupid and they do shit like making death threats or whatever um but overall like i think the criticism I've seen of that article is well justified. And yes, it is one of the reasons that that video game journalism is not taken seriously because people just want to make stupid or like they just want the clicks and they just want the and this is the things people point to. I think there was another incident that happened um, from a major news outlet from video game journalism that was is also a reason it's not quite taken seriously in the same way that like uh, whatever like CNN Fox you want you know I don't want to like get into political debate here but th those two are honestly a little more journalistic and taken more seriously than like I don't know IGN GameStop Polygon Kotaku and one of them tweeted out a a meme or a picture or a video or whatever you want to call it. And it was a comparison video, as they do. But instead of comparing it like the PS4 versus PS4 Pro, here's how it looks. It was PS4 versus Xbox. And yes, I can laugh. And I like my Xbox. I can laugh. And I it was kind of funny. But should IGN be posting that? Sorry, just called them out. No, yeah. they shouldn't. And there was some great so damage let's, just, just to give, Just to give like specifics so people understand what you're talking about, because I saw it too. Yes, like they too. posted, here's God of War on the PS4 Pro, yeah. and they showed the image, and then here's God of War on the Xbox One, and it's just a black screen. Yeah, yeah, and that's Distasteful embarrassing. For sure. That's yes. embarrassing for honestly the biggest video game yeah. journalism site and and company in the industry. Yeah, and like, and who was it? Destin McGarry and Ryan McCaffrey posted like a tweet, apologized for it like four hours after it was on, I don't think they saw it and someone brought it to their attention. It's just, if you're going to, okay, I get the the mindset of, yes, it's kind of funny. Like, you know, if we can't laugh at ourselves and what, what are we really? But you're the video, like the like video game journalist. You're like the top dog because like Tyler said, they're the biggest company. Like when I think video game journalism, I think IGN over anyone else. Um, and you're posting that. Like, that makes you look unprofessional. And you can't take it seriously. And if I was, like, Xbox, like the, you know, Phil Spencer or the, like, what's his face? Mike Gabara. 
Yeah, or any of them. Like, I could be reasonably upset, and you'd have to understand yes. why that this was posted. And you could maybe be like, hey, I'm not going to go to IGN anymore. I'll go to GameStop, Polygon, Kotaku, mm -hmm. whatever have you for yeah. News Game Informer. And those are all three really big companies. So yeah. it was really dumb. And the fact that there are people outraged, and granted, that they're outraged that IGN deleted it. That's what they're mad about. And those are the people that are PlayStation fanboys. So they're like, oh, it's all... <laughs> Again, I don't want to go too deep in the weeds here. But those are all like the people with no sense of humor. I'll just leave it at that. Like that's ridiculous. Yeah. You want to be? How can you be professional and posting memes? That those two aren't. You, they're not the same. You can't be professional it's, and post memes. Yeah, that's it, my opinion. My my thing. And before I turn over to Graham, I it's to me it's not even about it makes you look unprofessional because that's a given. It makes you look. Like you're cheering for one over the other, and it makes it look like you favor one over the other. And guess what? There's a lot of accusations about that already. Yeah, I, I've always because, thought IGN kind of favored the PlayStation over the Xbox. Because I mean, we can we can go back, and there are there are people at IGN, including the two people you mentioned, Ryan McCaffrey and Dustin Lieri, who I respect a lot as game journalists, and I think they do a really good job, and I think they're very objective. And this tarnishes them, and and that's unfair, and it put them in a sp in a hard spot. But it, there's already instances like last year at E3. We covered every single conference at E3 last year. Xbox had a pretty good one, and Sony's was it was shorter than normal. It wasn't quite as good as normal. Like it wasn't bad, but it wasn't quite as good as normal. But, man, they got on afterward and they were claiming it the greatest thing that's ever taken place in E3. And that, you know, fans already start to think, well, you're slanted. I, I don't necessarily think that. But then stuff like this comes out that just reinforces that. But the reason we're having this conversation, and Graham, I'm going to throw it to you as soon as I say this, but I just want to <laughs> like, put it into context. The reason we're having this conversation is because, full disclosure, had conversations with the site that we talked about first, not IGN, the first one, God of War. And said, hey, this is what it looks like. Honest opinion. You know, um, here's, it, it looks like the game wasn't even really played. Because what was in there about specific combat in terms of controls? Nothing. Yep. What was in there specifically about story? Nothing. Nothing but music. What was in there specifically about, yeah, the score in the game? Nothing. So, it looked like, just perception, no proof of it, it looked like it was pulled from, vague ideas were pulled from other early reviews, which, by the way, all the big sites got early copies, but the small ones didn't. And yeah. it looked like thoughts were pulled and something was thrown together to get clicks. And, and that's, that's unacceptable and it's unethical. And we're talking about it now because the commitment was made that it was going to be taken down and it wasn't. Yeah. And real Graham, quick, Graham, yeah. before you go, I'm just going to say, when you mentioned the score, I, I, it kind of slipped my mind. Like that was... I, I noticed that the first thirty minutes into the game, like the there's a there's some music at the in the early stages of the game that's like, like you know at the end of Halo when you're driving the Warhog and you hear that dun dun dun, dun like you know how that's amazing. That's what the score felt like in God of War, uh, at the beginning. So I'm super excited to see the music and that is to something I would <laughs> or to hear it <laughs> to hear it. Sorry. Um. But that is something I would mention in my review if I was doing a review for this game. Just saying. Graham, your thoughts. We've, we've cut you off long enough. Yeah, well, you guys have said a lot about it. Um, I'll just say a few things, and we'll see where that goes. But, yeah, I've many times when I've been interested into a game, like I'll read the review or I'll watch the review, and they are lengthy. And even when they're not like major games, most of them are major games, but they're really lengthy. 
and they go in depth about many things. And when I read this, well, it was over before I even knew I was reading it, basically. Um, but yeah, I got the impression that the game wasn't played uh, much or any. And it does give it a disservice to such a great game. And to give it such a low score, like, there's games that get 10 out of 10 that are like a masterpiece, like uh, Breath of the Wild. Um, I can't think of other games right now. And even when I played Breath of the Wild, I was like, well, I don't really like that, or that kind of sucks. But it's not enough to take away for the overall experience of the game. Yeah. So if I was doing a review, and anytime, okay, I don't like that, that's a negative. I don't like that, that's a negative. Then that score is going to come down. But that doesn't reflect the overall experience of the game. So I think you give it a disservice. Um, and I was reading some things about it, and there's like con- like some like contradictions. Like uh, basically, it said the game was great, but then it got rated as good. So how can the game be great if it's rated as good? <laughs> so, and like yeah. like I said, there was nothing about the score or the gameplay. There was nothing that made me enthralled with the game. I'm like, okay, that's this is not really servicing what a review is supposed to do. So no. yeah, and that act like it definitely was unprofessional. And I know that okay, that's next. That's the greatest thing out right now. That's what everybody is searching. So let's just jump on that. But all gamers and people like we we read this stuff. We know this stuff. We're passionate about this stuff. So when we see it that it's not that well written or you didn't give it the like the going over the thoroughness that such a game deserves, then there you're gonna take backlash and people are gonna comment because people are like being vocal and voicing their opinion. Sometimes their opinion is kind of uh, negative and attacking, which isn't that great. But there's some people who have constructive criticisms that say that it's bad. Maybe you should take that down or you should fix that. And you shouldn't think that you're being attacked. Like this person is trying to like help you out because yeah. they don't want to see such negativity around such a great game. And especially being part of the gaming industry, like you want that to be a good positive vibe and no reason for people to attack. And then when you got IGN doing that thing too, the comparison, I'm like, man, like what were they thinking? Like, really, you want to, you want to like anger people in the industry? Like some of those big companies like Xbox, like they're huge. They're the reason you have a job. And you're going to go out and deliberately like, like say, well, you don't have anything to offer and stuff like that. Yeah. Then I hope you get backlash from that. So you, you learn that you just can't do that stuff. Like well, you're running a site where all these people like come and visit. And uh, yeah, you don't want to anger people. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. Right. And you're absolutely right, Graham. And, you know, the IGN thing, I'm just going to say that was most likely one person who went rogue. Yeah. Yeah, and Place, it was, uh, that was and, a, and it was dealt with by the grown ups in the room. I'm sure that person lost the power to do, do that again because it's like, okay, I'm sure you, I, I, you have to be monitored. <laughs> there's a pretty good chance that person lost the power to enter the building. That's possible. He, he might have, yep, he might have been After fired. You, you would have because to be pretty high up, though. He or she, you got to think, or, yeah, he or she. You got to think about <laughs> this, though. Here's the thing like Ryan McCaffrey, for example, who I have a lot of respect for. Like him or not like him, whatever. He's pretty objective and he's fair. And, you know, I think he does a good job. He's built relationships with people at uh, Microsoft. He put together a, a podcast episode that had, you know, the the three main people who were responsible for the original Xbox, the 360, and the Xbox One. That was the best podcast episode I've ever listened to. You know, you can damage those relationships with stuff like this. Yes, yeah. and those relationships are viable for your job. Yeah. It helps him excel at what he does. I wish we had that kind of access. Again, Phil, if you're listening. <laughs> um, you can try. Or, or Major Nelson. You or know. Major we, Nelson, we, we, yeah. We, 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 we love you too. But, I, yeah, the but, people yeah. that... 
Go ahead. The people that like complain about them taking it down are just stupid. No, taking like, it down is the right thing. They're they're dumb because they needed to take it down because they don't want to hurt their relationship with Xbox. Granted, I mean, like I, I see kind of the opposite side, but I, I don't think it has as much water to hold for the argument. So, yeah. and and I get it. Like if so, okay, so on Twitter, if someone a person tweets something stupid, right, and then they immediately take it down, like you're gonna, that's. Deserving maybe some criticism. Stand by what you said. But it, the one person who probably went rogue here, is that really the view of IGN? No. No. So taking it down is the right move. Because it's yeah. not about the one person. It's about the company. Yeah. And we can get into the conversation about judgment and hiring, which apparently there is some. If There's some issues there. But... <laughs> That's uh that's a different conversation. For but time. back to the original. <laughs> like you can't just chase clicks and chase traffic because you, you've got here's the thing. So I'll I'll put it this way. This conversation could burn a branch. Yeah. It could. I don't want but, it to. I hope it doesn't. And that's why we're not mentioning any names or websites or anything here, okay? But to us, the integrity of it is more important. I agree. Yeah. Ethics are important. Yeah, and I, I would, I would not be. Do, I mean, I'd be doing a disservice to the ethical whatever <laughs> <laughs> if if I didn't the use if we didn't if we didn't use this platform to call out shit. That even our friends are doing, or people yep. we might have relationships are doing, for doing stupid shit. Okay? Like, again, we're trying to not be dicks and mention who they are, but, like, we would be doing a disservice if we didn't mention that this was happening and call them out yep. for it. Because, because they could get pissed. We'd be but, hypocrites. Yeah. If we didn't mention it when it was people we knew. Yep. And I think it's more important to mention it when it's people you know. Yeah. And that's what oh, we for did. sure. And and again, like, you know, we make no secret. Like, we're part of the Xbox Hub dot com. It this wasn't from that site. Definitely. And not. and I'll I tell mean, you guys obviously. this. I, I write <laughs> yeah. I write reviews for that site. And I'll tell you this, you might disagree with the score I give a game. That's fine. Well, we'll have a conversation about that all day long. I love that. But I the promise I'll make is I will never, ever write a review. That's unfair to you or the game. And that means I'll play the damn thing long enough to get an opinion formulated and I'll do it in a way and I'll, and I'll write it in a way that addresses all the aspects of the game, including the score, which is never mentioned, including the story, if there is one. Yeah. Including the graphics including the environment, including the characters, all of it, including the controls. And when you don't do that, yeah, man, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to say. It gets me fired up. I'm sorry. It's just, it's complete crap. Yeah. And thinking about you back that. at that review is it basically, it attacked it because it wasn't like the original three. Which, that is not a viable reasoning to attack something. Yeah. Because th that was a trilogy that, like, I, I don't want to see that. I enjoyed those games. Do I want to play that same game again? No. I'm I'm so stoked to see the this new experience, like, this new story, how it's going to unfold. Well, yeah, Graham, you're right. And here's the thing, though. It's not about the score. I don't give a shit what score they gave it. Give it a two. No, and that but was the back problem. it up. Yeah, you guys have the back. But it that up. was the problem that the score they give it didn't really reflect the article. No. So it was like we want to like we, it was like writing it for views. It's exactly what it felt like because they yep. the shit the stuff in the article the substance the very limited substance did not reflect the score they ended up giving it. So it was like we're gonna 
We're going to make it just enough to where you can be mad, but not enough to where, like, we actually have to, like, back up our opinion. Yep. There was a lot of issues. And, yeah, I know, Graham, you have an issue with that thing. That was not the only issue. There was there was quite a bit. Oh yes, to be upset yes. about. And yeah, I don't, I, don't I, I could not care less what score you give it, but back it up. Yeah, have specifics to back up what you're saying. Yeah, and, and that's like that's like writing 101. You know, you try yeah. to make an argumentative essay. You need a you make your point. You give reasons why your point is your point, and then you give a like the ending, the conclusion. That's ninth grade shit. Yeah, <laughs> I've known that like, for a long time. Yeah. Like, I don't think I'm a great writer, but <laughs> I know that. <laughs> so, anyway, enough on that. I, I just, I, I feel strongly about, you know, we can disagree about how good a game is. We can disagree about which console's better, all of that. That's fine. And that's a healthy discussion, as long as we're not total dicks to each other. Just because we don't like the same plastic box the other person likes. Yeah. Don't be a fanboy. Or be like, yeah, it sucks. That's, that's, Why does it suck? Yeah. Be- because it does. Like if, if you're if reason. you're arguing <laughs> if you're arguing just so you can validate your own purchase, your own decision, that's crap. And that's what most people do. Yeah. But if you objectively think one's better than the other, that's fine. We'll have that conversation. I love that conversation. Because yeah. you know what? They're both freaking awesome, and so is the Switch. Well, yeah, right. in a different way. Too far, Tyler. Too yeah, far. in a different way. Because the Switch is a different console. Yeah. The Switch yeah. isn't competing with Xbox and PlayStation. It's not. No. No. So, but they're both freaking awesome. There's awesome things on both of them. Who gives a shit which one somebody buys? Yeah, because no matter what, the fact that somebody bought one makes gaming stronger. Yep. And... And I'm going to make the argument, I know we're mostly a console podcast, but you PC gamers out there, yes, there's a too. lot of stuff on the PC that is not on any of the consoles, mostly strategy games that I love, like Civilization, just to name one. Um, so, you know, we love all of you guys. We just focus because we don't want to overextend ourselves on the consoles. <laughs> yeah. But I do love playing my PC every now and again, and there's some amazing games on there. And if you're a gamer... And you love listening to the podcast, like we, like you're our favorite people because yeah. we we love gaming here. We love gaming. Yeah. We we do complain about the Xbox when they do dumb things like don't have games to play on my <laughs> five hundred dollar system. Yeah, the, the, the little things, you know, <laughs> the little things. Or PlayStation for some of their, you know, quote unquote consumer friendly, but not really practices, <clears throat> not having EA access. Or Nintendo yeah. for not having multiplayer. Like, I'll mention all of those. But I or have Nintendo for me content. having to have, like, 18 cords and three phones oh. to do. Oh, can, can I mention one thing I forgot to say earlier? <laughs> what yeah. is with PlayStation and having, like, two-foot-long cords? I swear to God. <laughs> their HDMI cable is, like, two feet long. The con- cord to go to their controller that lasts about three hours is, like, two feet long. And their plug's, like, two feet long. Where I have a 4K TV, I'm not sitting three or two inches away from the TV. I'm sitting six yeah. feet back. That's yeah. just my one complaint about the <laughs> new <right>. system. <laughs> All right, Sorry. I gotta move us on. All right, you <laughs> you move it on. Steve okay. is angry. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> we talked about some great games so far. We talked about uh, probably the biggest franchise ever, Call of Duty. We talked about God of War, which is awesome. So we're hoping for some awesome games from Ubisoft this year, including. Skull and Bones. Hopefully it doesn't get delayed three times. Like every other Ubisoft game. But Ubisoft has announced its E3 conference date and time, so we know when we're going to get the answers to those things. And that's on Monday, June 11th at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. And by the way, we're going to have comprehensive E3 coverage, including shows about every single conference that takes place there. And we'll be doing those live on Twitch and also... Uh, you'll be able to get them on iTunes, CastBox, whatever it is you use to listen. We'll have all that information there for you. But Ubisoft's going Monday, June 11th, 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern Time. So, Graham. Yes, sir. You're a big Switch fan. That's pretty safe to say. Yeah. I enjoy so my Switch. So, Dark Souls is another game that deserves, you know, longer than 750 words in a review. Yes. 
Um, I'd probably write 750 <laughs> words of any different ways I will die or die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Dark Souls Remastered uh, was coming out May 25th. You were going to buy it on May 25th. Now you're not. Don't it's tell me delayed. what I'm going to do. Oh, oh, it's delayed. Oh, it's delayed. Been delayed. Okay. So it's you don't possible. really know when you're going to buy it, but it's now later this summer. So what are your thoughts on that? Uh, you know, I know from the other systems, it's still being released on the launch day that was announced. So I'm thinking maybe it's, there are some issues with porting it to the Switch. But honestly, like now I have the PS4 Pro and I just got the One X. So I still have a ton of games. And if I pick it up on its release day, who the hell knows when I'm actually going to play the thing. So it doesn't bother me whatsoever. Uh, it's not going to be like, okay, it's not coming out on the Switch, so I'll buy it on a different console. It basically has no bearing on me buying it or not buying it. So, But if they have to do this to make it right, then by all means, take the extra time. I've got other things that occupy my time. I know there's other people probably were more looking forward to it, but don't tell me you ain't got something else you can play to tie you over then. Because if you say that, I say you lying. So yeah, Donkey Kong comes out around then, doesn't it? And tennis yeah. aces at some point in the that yeah. window. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there's there's lots. Not to mention Graham's gonna tell us all later about a super underrated, awesome game that's coming to Switch next week. Which is <laughs> well, we'll get to it. <laughs> well, we've talked yeah. about the game many times. And actually, there's two great games that are getting re-released on switch ah, yes. yes coming next it's week. a good it's a good time to be a switch owner yeah so but you know let's throw some love xbox this way we've been a little hard on them the last couple of weeks <laughs> Bram. no have you guys you know. <laughs> so ign we were a little hard on them too um they posted the top 25 xbox one games um this week in their opinion I don't want to run through that real quick, but then we're going to talk about our top five each that you can play in the Xbox One. So the rules for this, for Ooh. us, we have to have played it. So if we didn't play the game, it's not going to be on our list. So don't send us hate mail. I mean, you can mail at thegaminghub.net. But please don't send us hate mail just because we can play the game that you really love. But here's IGN's top ten. Xbox One games. So number 10, Titanfall 2, which had a fantastic campaign, by the way. Sure. Uh, no, at number 9, Dishonored 2. 8 was Overwatch. 7, Forza Horizon 3. 6, Graham, I know a game you've gained some interest in, uh, The Witness. It's true. Yeah. 5, Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain. Number 4, The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt. Number three, Rise of the Tomb Raider. Coming in second, I have an issue with this. Grand Theft Auto V. And at number one, Inside. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's Which one? Into it. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I know the game. <laughs> Inside's awesome. I just don't know that it's the best game on the Xbox One. You don't and I have think, a big Tyler? problem. What's that? I said, you don't think? I don't. Say it isn't. <laughs> I know. Uh, I have an issue with Grand Theft Auto V being on this list at all. Just because this was a game that originally released in the previous generation. Yeah, so is and that like saying we say Pirates from the OG Xbox, now you play on yeah. Xbox One? Well, that's yeah, like so are we going to allow backwards compatible titles to be <laughs> oh, entered in here? Um, no, it's... <laughs> I don't want to go that's that far That's basically what it, it is. I don't want to go no because it got a full retail re-release, so I don't okay. want to go that far with it. But I'll say this is the same thing as Mario Kart winning Game of the Year like four years in a row. Not really, but they won <laughs> awards in different years for the same damn game. Just put on a different system. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we we thought about this and. We want to put together our own top five. We're not going to do 25 or 10. Oh, what? I wrote down 25. No. Did you? No. <laughs> you 
<laughs> I struggle with five. <laughs> <laughs> Graham, that's not nice to Xbox to say that. Well, that no, that's my opinion. <laughs> it was hard to pick five because there's yeah, so so many great t- titles out there. To there you go. At a boy. <laughs> there you go, Phil. So you can still come on. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. So top five each. Um, Let's do uh, Steve first. What are your top five games? (laughs) Well, you're not going to like mine. (laughs) My (laughs) my number five game is Dark Souls 3. It's amazing. Number four, Ori and the Blind Forest. Also amazing. By the way, also released on the 360. The definitive edition was released on the Xbox. Just saying. Uh, Number three, Sunset Overdrive. I loved it. Really think Xbox made a mistake not renewing it and letting them go make Spider Man. Number two, The Witcher 3. Uh, yeah, there's not much to say about this game that hasn't already been said a million times. And number one is Tyler's favorite game, Grand Theft Auto 5. <laughs> it's the best game on the so, Xbox. I love the game. I just don't think it's an Xbox One release. It's an Xbox 360 and PS3 release. It didn't ask for a release, it just said top games suppose, on the Xbox One. I know. As yet in Pacific now. And not backwards compatible either, because that's not released on the Xbox One. True. Whereas this was released on the Xbox One. Okay. That's where I go with it. All right. That's fair. Well, then could we say that, well, probably not anymore, but could we say that, um, uh, what's it called? The, shit, I can't even think of it. The zombie game for the PlayStation. Days Gone. Days Gone. No, the other one. The, the <laughs> Last really of Us. One. Last yeah, of Last of Us. I said it earlier. <laughs> the last of us <laughs> could we say that's the best game on playstation 4 well it's not I but i know but you so know what i mean we're talking xbox and now you guys are talking about playstation okay so, so you're making me take out gta 5 and ori because ori was also released on the 360 i would add diablo 3 and halo 5 somewhere in that list i think wait, i would what? put those two at the bottom and move the other yeah. three wasn't out. diablo 3 on i'm not making no, you take it, it out we're just debating it's fine. Actually, Diablo three may have been released on the PlayStation. I, I thought I thought I saw. I remember seeing it in a three sixty case. Because well, an <laughs> Ori I won't make you because Ori was released. <laughs> Why is it so hard to pick? So, <laughs> Steve, Ori was like released, released when the Xbox One was already out. <laughs> it wasn't re released on the Xbox One. All right, it launched when the Xbox One was out. But I love GTA. I think GTA five is awesome. That's the first GTA five game I ever finished. And the first GTA 5 game you ever finished? Yeah. No, the first GTA game, sorry. <laughs> I never finished. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but, yeah, I, I think it's fantastic. Except, yeah. you know, we, we started GTA Online way too late. <laughs> that was a debacle yeah. when we did that, but... Yeah, whose idea was that? Um, Yours, Graham. I, I wouldn't... So, that was a rhetorical yeah, question. Like Didn't require an that. answer. <laughs> Didn't require an answer. So... But anyway, no, it's a great game. Graham, what's your top five? Okay, my top five, which were five games that were actually released on the Xbox One. Uh, Number five, I have Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor. As you guys know, I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. Uh, When I discovered this game, I was in school at the time, couldn't quite afford it. So I was a little late into the game before I was able to play it, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. Next on that list is Unravel, which is a great game as a platformer. Uh, When I saw that E3, I thought this game looks like it's going to be amazing. And then when the price was announced for it, I'm like, okay, even if this game's not that great, it's not going to be losing that much money. And it was great. Uh, Next, I have at number three, Rise of the Tomb Raider, which was an amazing game. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed the first one. I pre-ordered this sequel as soon as I knew it was coming out, and I was not disappointed whatsoever. Uh, then, uh, number two was Fallout 4, which I'm a huge Fallout fan, if people don't know that, and I really enjoyed that game. Uh, the story was really cool. I enjoyed Fallout 3, and I felt like this built off of it and introduced some extra concepts that the other one didn't have, and your procrastinator actually talked, which was awesome. I said procrastinator. Procrastinator? <laughs> Protagonist. <laughs> okay. Well, it is hey, a fallout. Hey, that's why it's such a long game. Yeah, you procrastinate <laughs> yeah. a lot in fallout. <laughs> there, there was a lot of procrastinating. I'm like, yeah, I'll come back, do that quest. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll look after that community later on. 
never did. So yeah, that was my number one procrastinating game. Um, and the number one on my list is it was on Steven's list as well, which is The Witcher Three: The Wild Hunt. That yeah. game, the story was awesome. The characters were awesome. I thought it was well written. I'm super stoked with anything with Pro CD Projekt Red written on it yeah. from the here on out. They're kind of like a in the Bethesda realm for me now. They're they're an amazing. Uh, developer um mm -hmm. so yeah i did make a list one time before of uh, my top five and i did have fallout 4 at the top but i think the witcher 3 with its characters and the story i think it just it's a little better in fallout 4 in my opinion and, and that is my opinion, my opinion. so if you guys yeah. want to send hate or anger towards me let me know what i picked wrong and i'll tell you no you're wrong wow i have i have something that to, to critique you on for someone that liked Shadow of Mordor, I am super surprised you did not play Shadow of War. Um, wait, wait, wait. Don't say I didn't play it. Oh, you played I, like I 10 minutes it. of it. No. Yeah, I, how far you get in it? Like an hour? No, no. Maybe 10 hours. Oh, yeah. Okay. Why haven't you finished it? <laughs> it's a better game, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Oh, remember, I'm always if, right. If we're attacking people for not finishing, which <laughs> you were the worst one for this. You did not finish Shadow of Mordor, did you? <laughs> Graham, Graham, I think the list of what I have finished is shorter so, than the list Steve, of games I've started and haven't. <laughs> so Steve's well known for not finishing games. So Steve, tell us, how many games on your top five did you finish? Uh, finished GTA V, Ori, um, and Dark Souls. So three out of five. The so Witcher after. 3 just... It's, it, <laughs> it just came at a bad time. And then Sunset Overdrive, I have an excuse for that. I was a completionist in this game, and I was trying to finish every single quest, or, like, yeah, quest. Yeah, side, side quest. quest. And yeah. And one of the side quests glitched out, and I was like, I'm done. Like, that's how mad I was that it glitched out, because I was in love with the game, and the fact that I couldn't finish the stupid quest made me like, nope, not doing it anymore. Not doing it anymore. I want to complete the game at 99%. Nope, not just not going to finish it at all. Stupid, but that's what happened. Well, at least you handled it with maturity and poise. <laughs> As so, I am want to do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Tom, right. what's your, your top five? So my top five, before I say my top five, again, mail at thegaminghub.net. Um, if you have uh, a different uh, top five, different games of mine, also let us know on Facebook, uh, the Gaming Hub Forums, on Twitter, at TXH Gaming Hub. And uh, when you're in any of those, you can find our Discord as well, or in the show notes, uh, if you're listening on iTunes, CastBox, or anywhere else. Uh, look in the show notes. You can get a link to Discord. Join the community there. Let us know what your top five games are. Mine, number five, Ori and the Blind Forest. I thought it was fantastic. Uh, visually, I think it's one of the best games in the current chat. Wow. It's just super cool. Like the scene with the tree, right? Um, when uh, it's hard to explain. The the It's fairly early in the game. Yeah, but, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, the tree and there's all the colors going on around it yes. and everything like yep. that. Like that is amazing. Uh, it's just such a good game, and it's it's hard. It's not necessarily easy, and you got to be pretty strategic on how you play it. It's a fun game. Uh, number four, Halo Five. I know this game got some hate for the campaign, uh, probably fairly, but the multiplayer is really fun, and I have a really great time with it. So to even still, like I would yeah. jump in, it wasn't a wild play. In what the game came out two and a half years ago at this point, so. It's, uh, I think it's a testament to the game that, you know, we, we still jump in and play multiplayer once in a while. And it's still pretty fun, and it's easy to find a game, so a lot of people are playing the game. Yeah, and if, if you didn't let me choose GTA Five or Diablo because they came out on original mm -hmm. systems, I would put Halo 5 as my number 5. Yeah. Those are my top 10. Okay. An honorable uh, mention for me is Ori and the Blind Forest. It was okay. a great game. Can I, can I finish my top? <laughs> no, we're going to no. keep interrupting you. Okay. No. That's, I mean, that's fine. So, number three, uh, I've written a, few, a fair amount of reviews um, for the Xbox Hub, and Unravel is the only game I ever gave a five out of five. I think it's fantastic. I think the story is tremendous, and I think uh, the visuals in the game are great. I think the sounds in the game, I think everything in that game contributes to, the, to how the story wants to make you feel. 
and I think it's fantastic. And Steve, I know you have a different opinion on the game. We'll get to that in a second. But you didn't finish it. Like, <laughs> yeah, of course. But I think this game is freaking awesome. And I think it's great. And it started with when the game was announced at E3. And I think it was three, no, four, three or four years ago. It was announced at E3. And the lead developer got up on stage during the EA conference, which is normally a complete train wreck, but this was like a moment of gold in the EA conference. And this guy got up there and he was so nervous and he was so like proud of his game that he couldn't even really speak. He kept stumbling over his words. He kept like losing where he was in what he was saying. And he just became kind of emotional and, and it was so cool to see the crowd they're just really support him and you know just kind of applaud and all that stuff to kind of help him through it i thought it was super cool and you know so many times we see games introduced to d3 and it's exciting and it's fun but it's very much a business thing like these games were created around a conference table like what's going to sell the most copies this game this guy was truly invested in he cared about it it was important to him and I was a fan of the game from that moment, and the game delivered for me in pretty much every way. Steve, why don't you like Unravel? It's not that I don't like it. I just don't love it in the same way that you guys do. Okay. I love Ori in the Blind Forest. Um, in fact, actually, the first time I played it, I didn't make it super far. But then last E3, like when I saw the new trailer, I'm like, oh, I should go back to it. And Graham, I, you, you remember this probably. Me and Graham would were sitting in the party, each playing our own, um, like game of or or, or story of of Orion, and, and it was kind of competitive, but not really. But it was like, yeah, who's gonna finish first? And like, I knew where Graham was at, and he would be like, "I died." And I'm like, "Ha ha, you suck." <laughs> and, like, and then later, in the fun way, kept <laughs> exactly, that's what happened. So it was like a mixture of being competitive, but I really did love the game. Like it was amazing. Sure. Unravel was like. Eh, the puzzles weren't that hard. Like, no, it's uh, not. I didn't fall in love with the character that much. Um, in fact, I'll give you another game I haven't beaten, and this one is, is also ridiculous, is Inside. Uh, I played it once, Super good. got probably three quarters of the way through, but never wanted to go back. I I'm feel like that game was you. definitely a one-sitting type of game, and I did that with Limbo, I'm pretty sure. Yes. And I, I love Limbo. The same story here, yeah. But yeah. I, I couldn't finish inside and, and same I couldn't finish Unravel. If I sat down and played Unravel, and I don't know how long the game is in one sitting. Problem is I can't sit somewhere for five hours doing one thing over well, and over I, again. Well, I didn't do it in one sitting, Steve, but I will say Inside's worth the playthrough to get to the end. It's I don't agree with you know the article that we referenced at the beginning of the segment that it's the best game on Xbox One, but I think it's in the top ten. And it's fantastic. The story's great. And there's, it's it's a very deep story. It's a very emotional story. And I think it's really good. Um, it's worth a playthrough. I, yeah. I would give it another shot. I got you stuck at one point and I gave I wanted, up. I wanted to beat it. I, I'll definitely give it another go. I like those types of games. I like puzzle games. It's just, I don't know. Unravel never really did it for me with the difficulty of the puzzles. Like I didn't find myself thinking and I never was attached. And Inside was great. I just, I think I had something come up and then I was like, I'm not in the mood. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you're looking to increase the difficulty of Unravel, you could try go for all the collectibles because some of those were sure. really tricky. They are. Like, I looked up videos on there to get all of them, most of them. I can't remember now, but I thoroughly picked that game to pieces. Like, I yep, went I did too. back over it and got everything. Yep. And to me, I don't know about you, Graham, but Unravel to me is more about the story. Yes. Than the puzzles. Yeah. But it never hooked me. That's that's why. It's yeah, just, and, and it's, that's fair. It's not, I mean, you know, some games just aren't for some people. It's okay. Some people are but, just cold. Yeah, yeah. apparently. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I thought it was a great game about a lot of different things. There were a lot of different themes going on in that game mm -hmm. that I thought were just great. So uh, that's my number three. Number two is man it's one of the best games i've ever played it was a game that i wasn't really 
that hopeful about. Like, I knew it was going to probably be fun and good. But when I sat down and played, it turned into one of those games that I was just like, wow, I can't put this down. And that was Rise of the Tomb Raider. I just thought the story was fantastic. I thought the action sequences were great. I thought everything about this game was awesome. First Tomb Raider game I ever finished. You didn't finish the first one? Nope. I <laughs> Jesus, didn't. Tyler. I know. I need to go back and do it. I don't you know need to finish. First you need to finish Sunset Overdrive and like 85 other games. <laughs> <laughs> Be that as it may, Tomb Raider's like 10 hours long, okay? Sunset I know. Overdrive's like 40. Okay, so wait, wait. we're here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Assuming you don't do all the extra, like, all the extra tombs and shit. You can finish that game probably six to eight hours. Yeah. And, in fact, I did, because towards the end, I gave up on doing the tombs. And it's like, I just want to get through it. Because I'm like, they keep hyping up Rise, so I want to get to it. And then I was burnt out at when I finished it. So, eventually, like, I'll play Rise by the time eventually. the new one comes out. Spoken like a and true procrastinator. <laughs> what I'll yeah. do is I'll finish Like in your Rise. game, Graham. I'll finish yeah. Rise when the new <laughs> one comes out, and then um, I won't play the new one until the next Tomb Raider comes out. Probably. That's, that's been the case, because I played the first Tomb Raider when Rise... Which, by the way, is September, Steve. Steve. Yeah. So, well, I have a long time, because I, I played Tomb Raider when Rise of the Tomb Raider was on sale for like 20 bucks. Because okay. I bought it for 20 bucks, like the definitive edition. Yeah. So I really have probably another year. So okay. I don't have... To, I, I don't have okay. to go next you know, at- as far as franchises go, this might be the one where I've played most games in that franchise. Really? Okay. Yeah. Not even Fallout? No. I I, I own all the, the older ones, but I haven't played any of the PC ones. You didn't okay. play 3 in New Vegas because that's more than Tomb Raider, unless you count the yeah. Tomb Raider games on like the PlayStation 2. Well, that's what I mean. I mean all of them. Oh. Like Anniversary, Tomb Raider 1, Tomb Raider 2, okay. Temple of Osiris, and all those other ones. So Graham's saying he's not as big of a Zelda fan as he says he is. Is what? Oh, oh yeah. actually, that's funny because I forgot about Zelda. Zelda's probably the one I finished the most. Well, it's easy to forget about Zelda. Yeah. Well, they're we're talking about the PlayStation, and Xbox, and top whatever. Because they <laughs> have right. their they have their own <laughs> franchises. Okay. So my number one is Sunset Overdrive. Okay. I just, man, I can't remember the last time I had so much fun with the game. And I'm still waiting for that experience again. And I'm really bummed, like you said before, Steve, that, that Microsoft let Insomniac go without doing a second sunset. And now they're building what is going to be an amazing Spider-Man game on the PlayStation 4. And the moment that game releases and gets awesome reviews, they're going to regret it. But... Yep. I just, I had so much fun with Sunset. I can't stress enough because this Sunset, I think, is the most underplayed game of this generation. <clears throat> yes. I think that people look at it and they look at the, like, pictures of it and they they just look at it on the surface and they're like, no, nah, that doesn't look fun. But I'm telling you, if you give this game a chance, the chances are you will love it. Like, even Graham, we finally got Graham to boot up Sunset Overdrive. And I know you that's did. probably going to get delayed now because you're going to have God of War well, going on. That, 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 that fell down on the list. <laughs> <laughs> but you were having some fun with it. And you might not love it to the extent that I do. But No, I, I don't. But You were having some fun with it, though. Yes, no, I, I was enjoying it. It's fun. I yeah, it's it's fun. That's what I'll say. It's straight up fun game to play. Yeah, like I'm not saying everybody's gonna think it's as awesome as I do, but it's worth playing. Wouldn't you agree, Graham? Like it's it's part of the Xbox yes. One experience, and it's worth playing. It is worth playing. Yeah. Yeah, and they've done everything to get this game in people's hands. They've made it free. It was games of gold for a month. That's so come I have it. <laughs> it's part of Game Pass now, isn't it? I can't confirm that i think it is they put it on sale a million times it's yeah. the only game that's on sale more is grand theft auto yeah well i don't count that as a sale though because it never goes below 30 but no and i know i know no what's always on sale steve are the the like the money for online uh yep yeah the add-ons <laughs> but but since it's awesome like i wish people more people would give it a shot 
And I, I almost wish that game was multi-platform because I think it would have been a for sure sequel. Yeah. I almost feel like Sunset Overdrive is more of a PlayStation type game than an Xbox type game. Because Xbox type games are the like hardcore serious shooters and stuff like that. And I feel like games like Sunset might appeal more to the PlayStation crowd. I might be wrong on that. You guys might disagree, but no, no, I agree. Because the Infamous is a game I think of when I think yes. of Sunset Overdrive, and Infamous is a PlayStation game, obviously. Yep. And even like the game that came out multi-platform called uh, what was it? Prototype was mm-hmm. more gritty than the Infamous games. Yep. And and yes, yeah, Sunset definitely didn't feel like an Xbox game, which I think is what they needed. I just think Xbox fans were a little too, you know, the saying "beggars can't be choosers." Well, apparently, they can. In the case of Xbox, <laughs> that's not <laughs> quite true. <laughs> but yeah, I, I do feel like PlayStation gamers have more of a broad palette. Like, they just like more types of games. And Xbox gamers love their shooters. And they love their, like, sports games, racing games, stuff like that. Um, But once you venture too far out of that, I feel like they're just like, eh, not for me. You know, and they don't really give games a chance. Whereas I think PlayStation gamers generally will uh, embrace more more of the genre spectrum well i don't think that's entirely true because i think playstation just has a bigger user base to work with well they so do, but they didn't last generation no they did though did they i'm 85 percent sure just because of the way you phrased that did they but yeah because japan is almost entirely sony and then there were a lot of PlayStation 3 users in America. I, I think there were more Xbox than Sony PlayStation. Didn't, Sony didn't catch Xbox Xbox 360 in sales until the very end of the generation. Like the very end. Uh, the Xbox 360 sold over 80 million units. I, I'm not saying they didn't. I'm just saying that I think that a lot of... <sighs> the user base for last generation was basically equal. But so what I'm saying, though, is Sony has more of a broad appeal. So they appeal to Japan, and they appeal to lots of different places. Xbox's bread and butter is in North America and the United Kingdom and certain pockets of Europe. Yeah, maybe Australia. Yeah. Um, I can agree with that. But because they've done, like, I, when I think Xbox, I think pro shooter racing games. <laughs> exactly. And That's it's my not, point, not, kind of. Not rightly so, because that's what they've had. Gears of yep. War, Halo, and Forza. And, like, there's the outliers, like Sunset Overdrive, mm-hmm. or um, my favorite game of all time, clo- or, okay, not quite, but close, on the Xbox at least, it was uh, Lost Odyssey. Great RPG. Okay. Actually, one of, one of my favorite RPGs ever. In fact, it's better than a lot of the PlayStation RPGs. But, those are outliers. Like, they didn't do amazing. Well, that's that. That's what I'm saying, though. It's kind of a chicken or the egg conversation. Like, does is the fan base that way because that's all Xbox based, or is the fan base training them to release only those types of games? Because when they release games like Lost Odyssey or Sunset, people don't buy them. Um, you know what I mean? Which is the egg in this situation? I, I don't think know. they need to make the games though, because. I, I feel like if you could put out a good RPG this year, a good hack and slash action game, a good like shit they don't normally put out. Um, well, we're gonna get a Forza Four, almost Forza Horizon Four, almost guaranteed. We potentially could get a new Halo game. Like chances are fifty fifty. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I you know, if you could throw a good RPG, a good hack and slash game, similar to God of War, or whatever. Like, even if it, and then a good, like, I don't know, Fable game. Like, you're looking at a, a reason for people to get the console. Like, three good games that are not in their normal, like, wheelhouse mm-hmm. would would probably convince people to pick up an Xbox One X. Well, and to be fair, to your point, Steve, like, Xbox was trying. They had games like Scalebound, 
which was not the traditional Xbox type game. Yeah, and it got canceled, which yeah. I'm yeah. still salty about. I've mentioned it before. It's my um, game. I and, wish. You know, Fable's associated with Xbox, but Fable Legends was a dramatic departure. And then Sunset was. So they've tried. Yeah. And the fans just kind of keep saying no. But, but anyway, uh, uh, we need to just go, yeah, before go ahead, we move Brandon, on. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Before we move on, I just like pointed that none of our top five is in other. Like, uh, there's neither top five in all three of our lists. They're all different. <laughs> yeah. So we all have a different number one, which I I think is good. Yeah. Because yeah. you want the player base to be a broad player base, right? And buy different types of games and enjoy different types of games, and that's good. I'm Graham. I'm surprised you didn't have like, you know. NHL 14, 15, 16, 17, <laughs> You know, if I put games in like order of what I put most time into, then it yes, would be those. Yeah. that would be on there. And Fallout 3 would probably would be on that list. But that was, I guess I can count for your list. It wasn't a one release, but backwards compatible, you guys were allowing. Yep. All right. But yeah, cool. so, I just want to point that out. All right. We got to move on. <laughs> yeah, we got to yeah. move on. We got to move into releases and deals. So uh, let's do that. Now in store. So let's start with Xbox. And next week, you got Space Hulk Ascension coming on actually uh, today. Uh, Babylon 2055 also coming on the 20th. And Death Road to Canada, Graham. Canada! <laughs> coming on the 25th. Uh, Gates Gold, you can still get The Witness and Assassin's Creed Syndicate. You're running out of time on The Witness, though. Pick it up. I did. It was get off my back. 10 for IGN, so uh, make sure you pick that up. And deals, there's an awesome deal going on right now on the Xbox Store. If you go in there, if you're a horror game fan, there are some super good prices in there and some other games, too. Uh, some games, like, 75% off or more. So, really good stuff going on in there. Check it out. And uh, let us know in Facebook, Discord, Twitter, whatever, if you pick anything up. All right, let's move on. Steve, what do you got for PlayStation? All right, well, not much, but Runbo and Code 51 Mecha Arena on the 24th of April. And then PS Plus Games, Mad Max and Trackmania Turbo. I don't really have any deals again. There's nothing that stood out. So PlayStation has sales all the time, but nothing... Nothing that really like stands out as oh this is a must buy. But Graham, I think I think the best out? deal for PlayStation Steve is got a war for sixty dollars. Yeah, that is true. That <laughs> probably is the best it's kind deal. of a steal. Sixty dollars. <laughs> yeah, sounds yeah. good to me. Uh, Graham, any Nintendo games? That are worth <laughs> <that>? <laughs> Get out. Yes, we have Nintendo games. Of course, we have Nintendo games. Uh, Tyler just mentioned Death Road to Canada. Well, you could also pick that one up for the Nintendo Switch on the 25th of April. I picked it because I live in Canada. I don't know about Death Road to Canada. Um, maybe you guys know of a road that I don't know. But uh, other than that, we have South Park. Speaking of Canada, uh, South Park, the fractured butt hole coming on the Nintendo Switch. I know it's been out on the other consoles and people have enjoyed it. So now if you people solely own a Nintendo Switch or you were just looking for a game for a Nintendo Switch, I think this is a great game. And you can pick it up on April the 24th. And then another game, which has already been released on the previous consoles, is Late Shift. Now, you've heard us talk about this game. It's basically a movie that you control the, the ending or like each scene. It progresses by on what decisions you make. Um, I don't see when I think of the switch, I keep forgetting, like, it's actually a console. If you dock it, it's on your big screen because I do play it that way. But I just think like handheld, right, because that's what separates it from the other consoles. So it, it would be a good game for on there as if handheld. I guess if you're driving, if you like want to watch a movie, but you don't have like oh, Wi-Fi or no. something like that. Right. You, you, just... you try and you're trying to advise people to watch a movie while they're driving. I'm going to say. Do not watch a movie while you're driving. Not while you're Stop driving. idiots on the road. <laughs> Wait, I don't the... want more people distracted drivers. So, what? you know, I'm going to go anti-gram <laughs> here. 
Do not text and drive. Do not watch movies and drive. Do not play with whatever have you and drive, please, <laughs> for everyone's sake. Yes. <laughs> so what I'm What I'll say. I did not advise people to play this game while driving. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> what I'll say, though, is if you have a Switch and you haven't played Late Shift, buy it. Yes. Yeah. Hey, I beat that game. So it's one of my like seven. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> well, it takes like an hour. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's such a good game, and it's a different game than what you're used to. Like you will there, you're watching a movie basically, and then you make decisions on what to say or do at given times. Yeah. And the entire story changes based on those decisions. There's seven possible endings. Uh, most of them, you know, don't end terribly well, but. I, I can't recommend this game enough. I bought it on a whim, like I was bored. And then I started telling all these guys about it. And everybody ended up getting it. They're like, man, you were right. This game's awesome. So, uh, Graham, I know you agree. And Steve, you agree. Like, yeah, this game's that, really fun. That's exactly what happened. Yeah. Graham. What? Sorry. <laughs> Late shift. What are your thoughts? Like, you oh. played it. <laughs> I, I told I, I tell you about Late Shift. Like, no, it's a great game. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's one of those games where it makes you want to play it again, like to see the different endings and stuff like that. Because when I played it, like I said, I played it three times in a row. That's how short that game is, Steven. Yeah, so it's... congratulations for getting through it once. <laughs> <laughs> but see, I didn't want to see the same scenes over and over again. Like Tyler was like I remember you telling me when you did the second playthrough, you're like, uh, like most of the scenes were the same. I'm like, okay, I just watched the fucking movie game. I don't want to redo it. I'm going to wait a while till I forget. And then I can yeah. enjoy it again and hope I don't yeah. make the same choices. <laughs> what I'm curious though, cause I've seen, I think three or four of the seven endings. And I'm really curious of like, you know, there, there's some choices that seem super major and there's some that seem really minor. And I'm wondering if some of the minor choices like set you on a totally different path. So I might go back and play it again, just to see. Yeah, maybe you could stream it. I, I that'd probably yeah. be a fun. If you would like to see us stream it, like send us a message on one of the seven million things you could send us a message. Yeah, on. <laughs> mail at, at thegaminghub.com. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah. So there's many yeah, of them, but, but he knows one. I'll say again: if you have a Switch and you haven't played Late Shift, buy it. Or yes. sorry, dot net. I meant dot net, not dot net. Up. Yeah. So <laughs> again, buy it. It's fun. So all right, that doesn't feel. Steve, what do you have for questions? Damn. All right. Well, I wonder what the first question could be related to. Uh, no, I mean it's anyone's guess at this point. But Brian asks, "Have any of you skipped work to play a new video game?" Um, if you don't mind, I'll go first here. I've never skipped work, but I did, may or may not have pretended i was sick to play halo 5 when the day it came out but that was because my first professor i had two classes that day my first professor said she was sick so she canceled class so i only had one class and i was like man i don't want to go to school for one class nope not doing it so i'm like hey professor i'm sick cough cough <laughs> in email <laughs> and i played halo 5 all day there you but go. i have not physically called out of work to play a video game. Alright. Graham, how about you? Okay, I'm gonna say I probably have, but I don't have any specific examples. Maybe, maybe I haven't, but last year, March 3rd, when the Switch came out and Zelda Breath of the Wild, I stopped doing any kind of weekend work for pretty much the rest of the year. Or I don't, maybe not rest of the year, but for a long time. People wanted me like come do this, do that. I'm like, nope, nope, not doing anything. So all my weekends were Breath of the Wild. So as far as skip work, there's been many a times which I wanted to skip work, but you know, part of me is like, you have bills to pay, or if you want to <laughs> buy that, you need to go to work. So that kind of overpowers my decision. But I can't think of any specific times that I've skipped work to play a new video game. Now, would I rather stay home and play video games than work? absolutely but i don't all right so for me uh steve kind of the same as you i definitely did in college absolutely like 
That's not when, like Madden came out or or like Call of Duty stuff like that. I was at home. I'm playing that game. <coughs> I'm sick. Yeah, yeah, something like that. And uh, but that might change this year. Um, I generally don't do it at work, but you know, depending on how things unfold, the next few weeks, uh, the job that I that I do, um, kind of doing the training classes and stuff might might get. Uh, put on hold for a little bit and I might be in a mood where, you know, I'm, I'm not feeling so good some days. <laughs> yeah. So, or for a lot of days, we'll see. But yeah, I mean, I, I could see it uh, for games like God of War or stuff like that. Like I'd certainly be tempted. Yes. But what else you got? Yeah. I mean, I kind of wish I would have called I out feel something I coming on for lie. Monday. I think I might be sick Monday to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I was legitimately sick this past week. Why couldn't it be this coming week? Because <laughs> then I could have called out Monday and spent the whole day playing God of War. But no, our second question from Blake. As uh, heard rumors about a new Splinter Cell, what are your thoughts on the series? I'll go first, just because it's easy. I've never played a Splinter Cell in my life. I have no idea. I just learned Splinter Cell has got a crossover with Badlands. Or Wildlands? Wildlands. It was yeah, it, Badlands no, it, it wasn't a crossover. Just uh, DLC, Fisher, right? Sam Fisher came. Sam into Fisher, yeah. So that that's all I know. Um, yeah. So nothing's hooked around it. I got other things on my list. So next. All right. Um, kind of the same, Graham. For me, I I know it's really stealthy in a lot of places, and stealth games aren't my type of deal normally. Yeah. So I've just never really felt the urge to play it but uh i i know a lot of people love the game so another one would not be a bad thing steve how about you i love splinter cell i love stealth games uh hitman splinter cell metal gear solid all amazing i i beat conviction i didn't beat blacklist surprise surprise but that was more because i was deployed when blacklist like was coming out and then the xbox one came out pretty quickly after that so I didn't really have a chance, and then when I upgraded, I sold my 360, and so I didn't play most of the games. Like, I wouldn't have played Grand Theft Auto V had it not come to the, the Xbox One, and that's why I counted as an Xbox One game. So, yes, I would be absolutely stoked for a new Splinter Cell game. Uh, I, I like stealth games. I like, and I like Conviction. I like Double Agent, and that was the only two. I, I played Blacklist, but I didn't beat it. So I, I would like a new one. I would like Blacklist to come to Xbox backwards compatibility because then for sure I will beat the game. All right. Sure, right, you, would. sure you would. For sure you would. For sure, probably, <laughs> maybe, definitely. Probably. But I would so, play it, wouldn't beat it. All right. So I think we got time for one more question. All right. By Last way. question. Uh, Tony asks, what do you think of crossplay between consoles? Uh, to me, and I'm speaking about him, it's a failure if next generation doesn't have it. Yeah. Well, now, this generation can have it. Yes. It's and and you know we we call out Xbox a fair amount, but let's be fair. It's not happening right now because of Sony. Sony's making the the conscious decision to say no, we're not going to do this. Yes. And you know, Sony, you make freaking awesome games. But when it comes, you know, and, and you do a great job at public relations and all that stuff, but when you say you're all about the player and giving the most choice and most options, you don't allow things like EA access on your system because, you know, you, you say you're about player choice, but then you make the choice for them. Same thing here. You're making the choice for the players. And I get it. From a business standpoint, I totally get it. But this is what players want. I don't want crossplay between um, console and PC. I, I absolutely don't. Even games like Sea of Thieves, it it's already ruining it. Yeah, because was, there's the sense. cheat programs you can download on PC that I'm pretty sure we've run into already that are making the game not as fun at times. I don't want that. I want cross console play. But we we can see it. It's just up to Sony to do it at this point. Microsoft's already said they're all for it, and Nintendo has too. So, uh, Graham, what do you think? 
Yeah, no, I agree with you 100%. Uh, I think the big issue with crossplay, like Tyler said, with PC and consoles, like it's so easy to cheat and with on the PC. So between consoles, that would be amazing. And I think we deserve it as gamers. We yeah. dedicate and we give so much money and... We have friends that play, and now you're segregating friends. Like, oh, I'm not as good friends with this guy because I play all the time with this guy online because he has the same system as me. Yep. This other guy, like, I'll see him at school, but that's it. Like, after that, maybe we'll hang out a couple times. Mm -hmm. So I think consoles, 100%, they should be cross-play. I don't understand why Sony's got to be this way. It, it doesn't hurt anything. If anything, it makes things better because... If I had a friend, well, I do have friends, uh, and <laughs> like they play NHL like 18 or whatever, like the future ones coming out or ones out now, like I would be playing with more friends. Like he has PlayStation, he has he has NHL, and I have Xbox and I have NHL, but we can't play. It's like, oh, yep. we should play. It's like, oh, wait, we don't have the same console. Right. So, yes, get this figured out. Don't make us wait till PlayStation 5 or 6, like. 2030 or whatever do this now i'm telling you right now we want it give it to us yep good call all right gentlemen let's get out of here wait wait do i get yes. to answer this question oh i'm sorry <laughs> go, go, no. go but hurry uh all right i'll hurry um i don't give a shit about crossplay because i realize the people i want to play with are the people i want to talk to and yeah. i don't see how crossplay is going to allow like chat and it could happen. And if but it that's going to be a part okay, of it, though, in my okay, opinion. Okay, it, better, it better be a part of it, because otherwise I don't care. I don't need to play with someone on PlayStation if I can't talk to them. And so without that, and, like, I want to be able to add them as a friend, too, because I want to be able to invite them to shit. Yeah, so no, at that happy. point, it, it <laughs> seemed, yeah, so I don't understand, I don't see how this could be a thing. Like, yeah. PC, you can add anybody. Xbox, you can add Xbox players, PlayStation, you have PlayStation players, invite them, blah, 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 blah. And talk to them. I don't see how you're going to be able to coordinate, like, with people without just doing extra work. And, I mean, not, not to sound lazy or anything, but, frankly, I, I don't care. I have friends on my Xbox, and I have friends on my P or PlayStation, and if I want to play with friends on my PlayStation, I will. And if I want to play with friends on the Xbox, I will. And, yes, it sucks, these games that come out on both, that you can't play with them, but tough. That's my thoughts. All right, great. So um, that's going to do it for episode 92, everybody. Uh, thank you for the questions that you sent in. Uh, if yes. you'd like to submit questions, be earned for a monthly giveaway, uh, you can do that by joining the community on Facebook, uh, the Gaming Hub forums. You can do it on Twitter, at TXH Gaming Hub. You can do it on Discord by visiting any of those two things or going to Twitch, um, TXH Gaming Hub there, and going to YouTube, the Gaming Hub Podcast. We'd appreciate that. We appreciate you to head over there, subscribe to us, and check out the videos that we have there. So, for Graham and Steve, I am Tyler saying thank you so much for joining us for episode number 92. We'll be back next week with episode 93. Until then, everybody, have a great week. Play God of War. Yes. Yeah. Take and, care, uh, everyone. Have a great week. We'll, we'll talk to you next week. Have a safe weekend. Bye.